Hey again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. Now this week, I've got something a little different. As a lot of you know, this week sees the release of the second edition of the Simple Steps to Sight Reading course over at Talking Bass. Now when people think of reading music, the first thing that springs to mind is usually pitch. The actual notes on the stave and how they correspond to the instrument. But that's actually a pretty small part of learning to read. There are only so many notes on the bass, but there are a near limitless number of different rhythms. Rhythm is what makes music music. Without rhythm, we'd just have notes in stasis. So rhythm is an essential part of learning to read, and because of this, reading can have an absolutely huge impact on our overall playing ability. Our approach to rhythmic subdivision, our rhythmic independence, and our overall music vocabulary all benefit from this area of study. So let's have a look at one lesson example from the reading course, where we deal with the introduction of a new rhythm. We're going to look at the eighth note triplet, and this is taken from level four of the course. We'll look at what triplets are and how to count them. Subsequent levels in the course work on all the different triplet permutations and gradually bring pitch into the mix. Remember, if you'd like to learn to read music, just follow the link in the info below and grab that 20% discount before the sale ends this weekend. Okay, enjoy. Now let's look at a completely different kind of rhythm, the triplet. The rhythms that we've covered so far, like the half note, quarter note and eighth note, were all divisions of bars or beats by two. Triplets break up the beats into divisions of three. In this level, we'll be sticking to the basic eighth note triplet that simply breaks a quarter note into three equal parts. And that looks like this. We have three eighth notes beamed together, and then we have this number three above or below the grouping. You might also see a bracket with the number, but it's not essential. In terms of their sound, triplets have a very distinctive rolling feel. So here's a click at 60 beats per minute, and if we count quarter notes along with that, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we want to break that up into groups of three. So. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's our groups of three. That's our triplets, okay? So, you know, you could count them as one, two, three, one, two, three, but it's a lot easier and fits a lot better with eighth notes if we count one and a two and a three and a four and a. So, with the click, three, four. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, okay. So you can hear there how it has that rolling feel. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and a uh, very rolling in its sound, very circular. Whereas if we listen to the eighth notes, we have one and two and three and four and very up and down, very binary. Okay, we've just got that one and two and three and when we have triplets, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, okay. So I think of you know anything that's um, based on those twos, like eighth notes and things like that, as being very square as opposed to the circle feel of these triplets. So now let's try playing some triplets. So I'm just going to take a C, third fret of the A string, and then we're just going to play along with the click. So this is at 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. One, two, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. Now let's try playing a line using triplets. So all we're going to do is play a C major scale up to the A and back down. So we have C, D, E, F, G, A, and back down, G, F, E, D, C, and then the B below to, uh, to bring us back around. So that gives us the following. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a. Okay, so we just have to play that along with the click, and you actually want to phrase them as triplets, so maybe accent a little on the one of each triplet, so we'd have one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and uh, three and uh, four and uh, just to get you used to that phrasing okay so here's the click again at 60 beats per minute 
a one, two, three, and a four, and a... Now let's have a listen to the difference between eighth notes and eighth note triplets. Now this can be a little bit tricky at first because we're going to be switching between the two and it's kind of like switching between two rhythmic modes. So, um, you know, it's not going to impact on the course at all, but uh, it's worth hearing how the feels differ. So I'm just going to play one note, a C, along with the click, and we're going to play one bar of each. So one bar of eighth notes, one bar of eighth note triplets, okay? So, oh, one, two, three and four and So with that comparison, you can really hear the difference between that rolling triplet feel and that very binary up and down square eighth note feel, okay? So let's try some lines in there. So for the eighth notes, we'll just come up the C major scale up to the G and back. So C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C, okay? And for the triplets, we'll play the same exercise we played earlier. C, D, E, F, G, A, G, F, E, D, C, B. Okay, so when we put those together, we have the following. Okay, so with the click. Oh, one, two, three, four. When you mix triplets and eighth notes in this way, the triplets can actually create quite a bit of rhythmic tension and it can be quite tricky to switch between the two feels. So don't worry if counting those, uh, counting those rhythms can seem quite tricky. As long as you can move between quarter notes and eighth note triplets, you should be okay for now. <laughs> Thank you.